Right. All right. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, I'm going to give uh, uh, some update on the um, on the project on on our on my hand and uh, mainly re uh, related to the update on. Uh, two projects I reported before, my gene.info and my variant.info, and, and now we collectively call them uh, so-called uh, Biosync APIs. And also, we uh, want to uh, put in some effort to try to expand the coverage of these Biosync APIs. Um, this is what I'm going to talk. And at the end, I will touch on uh, another related project called uh, Smart API Project, and we will see the progress on that um, direction as well. Okay, so uh, first let's uh, give some update on the Biosync APIs. Um, okay, I think for the for the Biosync API now, it, it, it has come uh, out of the my gene.info and the my variant.info project. And it really, like the objective for us is to try to build the unified APIs for 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 any kind of like Biosync and so-called like Biosync. So we actually really means um, is, is a bio, any biological entities because we think the um, underlying framework, underlying technology infrastructure we build for the my gene and my variant are suitable to extend to other, uh, cover other biological entities. So that's uh, our overall goal. Yeah. Okay. So um, as we all know, um, biology knowledge, biological knowledge is a complex uh, network and it's probably Similar, uh, similar to 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 a graph like this, and I I bet the real network is even much much uh, complex than the one I showed here, and and it really like the, each dot here is probably represented like any a, a defined uh, biological entities like genes, variants, disease, um, proteins uh, or drugs, all this, and then. Now all of these entities really like uh, um, connect to each other and form a, form a, like a complete uh, the whole scope of our uh, biological knowledge. And as a task for the bioinformatician, how we want to want to store all this knowledge and uh, and how we gonna like uh, um, put this into a, a queryable uh, queryable uh, interface for the biologists, and that's really the, our our task. And but clearly, there's no one fit all database can capture the entire knowledge space, right? So, so what we uh, bioinformatician are really good at is simplifications. When we take this challenge and we want to want to make it work, and so we do some uh, reasonable uh, simplification. And one thing I think is uh, is uh, is we 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 just take the, all these central hub nodes. Each nodes we as we define as a gene, variant, pathway, disease, metabolite. And just to take this out of the out of this huge network, and um, and make them uh, and not just to take that node, also take all the associated uh, attributes around those nodes uh, together. And but but we are not going to go too further out of this nodes and just to get the uh, each individual I entities out and uh, make a flat list basically. And we are really uh, hard to deal with, like a whole um, the, the, the the knowledge, the the data structure more than like a three dimension, and we have to like cut down the dimension uh, of our uh, knowledge space. So, but we are good to handle like a one direct uh, one dimension or two direction data. So we uh, we want to like make it simplify. This, um, this uh, data structure into uh, like a, just a flat list of all this um, gene, uh, a lot of gene variant, all these entities. So, um, but it, but they are uh, really like connected. So the way we did it is uh, basically just add an attribute to the each individual entities and and make the link between them. For example, for the gene, I may have a Attribute associated to uh, to the gene for the all the variants related to this uh, related to this gene, and and for pathway I probably have a list of the gene actually um, associated to this pathway, but I don't have to store the all the um, gene information every gene information in pathway database because I can just uh, store the, all the ID of the gene so that it will point to the gene database so that they uh, they can they can still be uh, be linked, but we they are living the 
like a separate database or separate um, separate like a um, uh, data structure. Okay, I think that's that was the basic idea, and and now we talk about how we're gonna put this kind of a, a list of the flash things into uh, into a database representation. I think right now there's a there's three mainly three kind of a representation of this uh, like a, in terms of data structure for storing this kind of data. Uh, a is a really long time uh, popular choice is a, a relational database. Basically, we've uh, put this flat list, formulated them into uh, um, multiple tables, and then the link is really the, between the, this table so that we can link the, from the pathway to gene and gene to variant, all this relationship between the between this uh, biological entities. Well, uh, each table probably can store a one uh, one type of a data, um, and that works okay. And uh, and uh, but one um, one one back uh, one kind of like a disadvantage is like we tend to uh, tend to repeat the data for those um, for example one to mini match one to mini match for example uh, a, a gene probably have a multiple variants then we basically need to repeat all the gene information in the same table for all the variants associated to the same gene so that's the nature of the relational database but it's a pro and con. I think a relational database works pretty pretty well for most uh, for a lot of use cases. And now recently, there's a new kind of a database called document based uh, and database that basically take the all entity and and all attributes related to this entity together make a so called like a document. It's really like it's like just like a hash table, like a dictionary in Python. Is all, all you call like a, a in JSON object. JSON really is a representation, string representation of uh, this kind of uh, object. So that means each document, each unit of the storage is one entity, one gene, one variant, one pathway, and everything related to, it is, to this gene is all together. That's the unique feature of the this document uh, database. And then the other other case uh, other case is really like a, is a, is a take the take the whole knowledge and is is. A, I think ultimately break down this knowledge graph to like a so-called triples is just a, or, or sometimes in other keys value databases they just do the key and the value. But it, the idea really is a, is ultimately break down everything into a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping. So uh, in in that case, there's a lot of uh, so-called like R RDF or triple stores to uh, handle this type of uh, storage type for the for the for our knowledge graph, and they all have the pro and the cons, obviously. Um, oh, I, I I want to say like I forgot to mention the um, like a graph database. I I didn't put this graph database into this three available. Um, Database representation because I feel like a great um, graph database is really is is another layer on top of the like existing relation either relational database or document database or key value database. It's just to add on those type of a representation with uh, with a graph algorithm so that you can easily do like a, a graph based queries. So I don't want to put the graph database into a into the, another totally new database representation. Uh, because of the underlying data storage type is is is, is either of uh, these three types. Okay, so really, like the next task is how to pick a big data database, right? Um, so, in my uh, in in my opinion, I think the database technology right now is become like a really really specialized, um, especially in the, the big data uh, era, and because we we want to uh, we want to the Database technology can deal with the big data scale, so we, to some extent, we have to sacrifice some of the like uh, some of the um, um, features, and so really like there's no one fit all solution, and not like a couple years ago, probably like a relational database is is just a dominant every use cases. Nowadays, you want to make like a wise choice and based on your uh, specific use case. And sometimes we actually need a like a hybrid solution. Um, and for our use case, for like a, what we have built for the mygene.info and myvariant.info, and we picked the documented databases. Um, 
the way the reason behind we uh, our choice is really uh, is because the the data, especially the gene annotation data and the variant annotation data, they are very uh, a is very heterogeneous, and the documented data basically provided the rich data structure can uh, able to handle this uh, heterogeneous data structure, and B is uh, gene variant. They are nat in nature. Those like a, I call we call like a biosins. Is in nature is a very object oriented. We typically in our um, downstream application we treat each gene as one object, each variant as one object, and with all the attributes uh, represented, uh, with all the uh, attributes related to this gene with this variant, they are all centered to the same gene, uh, same variant. So it is a, like a very naturally to represent the gene annotation uh, as, a, as, a, as a document, as a heterogeneous object. So that's one, um, I think, is a natural choice for us. And another important thing is uh, to, in order to deal with a very large data scale, and we wanted the, we, 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 this documented database to give you like, atomic operations, which means each gene each variant, they are independent because everything related to the same gene, they are already together. They are just like you, you pre-compute all this data structure and pre-integrate all this data, and but each individual gene considers they are, they are relatively uh, independent in your database. So that gives an advantage to, uh, for the for this, uh, high scalability because you, we, we now can just distribute all this gene object and variant object across um, Across uh, multiple multiple server, build uh, like a cluster. When we have more data, we just add more nodes into the our cluster. Because each genes, uh, the data representation, they are independent. They don't really depend on each other. And of course, that actually, the uh, the downside, of course, um, is, is, is then we then we have to sacrifice some kind of like a uh, join joinable. Uh, Feature just like the um, those we, is common from the relational database. So that's of course like the sacrifice we have to make. But I think for our use case, and is uh, that's fine to uh, lose this kind of uh, atomic, uh, this kind of a joint ability. Okay, so you are probably already familiar with all this uh, gene and variant annotation object represented uh, as uh, as as uh, JSON documents now. And here the left side is a typical gene representation. Of course, a much simpler case because I uh, just picked a few attributes for this particular gene CDK2. And here is um, another example for the uh, variant. And this is just to show the, all the annotations from Cosmic about this, this variant. And this ID is so-called HGBS ID. And in the real world, is you probably see a JSON object like this. For this is for one particular gene. We we can add uh, like a more and more attributes into this gene as uh, as we adding the more data source. And uh, when we adding more this uh, data, adding more attributes to this to this gene, it doesn't change any data structure of the rest of the rest of the data attributes. So that's a, a, a advantage of uh, using the JSON documents. Okay, so. Um, so this is what we built for the uh, by, uh, my gene.info and my variant.info. They all have the similar uh, like an endpoint pattern, and you can retrieve a gene or variant by the ID, or you can make a query and to get the matched gene or variant using this uh, query endpoint. And next slide, I just want to give you a recent update about the usage. I think a recent usage from the my gene.info is really exciting, and from the January of this year, we uh, up to May. I last to check in May. Is it really like we got like over uh, like a 30 million of a request, and that's pretty ex and that's very excellent. I think is a, is a, in terms of um, API uh, provider, and also uh, you can see here recent. Uh, normally from January to March, we always have like at least like three to five, uh, three to six million uh, requests. And from over 2,000, sometimes 3,000 unique IPs, and in last two months, April and May, we actually they all like get like over, they almost like a, 
11 million hits and for three over 3,000 unique IPs. So it seems like we got a lot of pretty good like jump in terms of usage recently. Um, also, in terms of breakdown to the type of a query, a uh, type of uh, access, you can see on pretty much 40% uh, for both direct API call and versus also the 40 percent of like a Python ver uh, Python client access, and uh, we now know the uh, direct use by the by GPS is now shrink down to like a, about less than 10 percent um, as our overall as our like overall uh, usage goes up. I don't think the actual use exact uh, request from by GPS actually dropped, um, but it's really just other type other use case other usage is uh, uh, has increased a lot. And we also uh, good to, uh, very excited to see them now. We reached the 50% for the R client uh, for the MyGene.in R clients. Okay, so that's a pretty exciting uh, outcome in terms of uh, recent usage. And for my MyVarian.info, we also got a pretty decent uh, usage. And uh, total from January to May, we got a four million requests. And although we, you can see, like in February, we do have a, like a big jump of a big lump of uh, usage that's like a uh, already uh, three million but uh, across all the other um, other um, monthly use case from over 1,000 unique IP that's uh, not bad actually um, you can see the breakdown here we actually see the 50% of the usage actually come from the my very R client and 30 over 20% for the direct call and or the Python client and the lesson we actually also have a lesson six about six percent they are um, um, a, a, a volunteer, a, a, our by my variant.info user generated a so called uh, my variant.js JavaScript client. That's actually pretty uh, good to see this kind of a usage. Okay. So, another update is uh, we recently, uh, our, uh, niche, uh, our uh, genome biology paper about the my gene.info and uh, my variant.info are just out uh, just a few weeks ago, so that's uh, exciting. And we can be happy to see that this is actually so called like out metric score. That's really like a track of the um, mentioning of uh, this paper uh, in tweets, in blogs, and also how people actually click the link to view the paper. That seems like a pretty good score in terms, um, in, in terms of we just published this paper uh, uh, a few weeks ago. That's it, um, exciting. Okay, so really, like uh, now we uh, we build on my gene info and my variant info, and we um, we really really uh, figure think of the, all the um, all the infrastructure, all the technology layer uh, behind my gene info and my variant info. They are quite similar, and we we really can just uh, abstract out. Uh, abstract out all this infrastructure level, uh, uh, infrastructure layer and into a so-called biosync API and that really is a, can be used to um, to build the API for any other uh, biological entities. For example, uh, really like a, for all the MyGene.info and for both MyGene.info and MyVariant.info we have uh, Similar JSON data aggregation algorithm. We have the similar REST API pattern. We have the same Elastic Search base, the high performance query engine. We also have the ability to serve the linked uh, JSON LD linked data, and also also like other feature like a data updating scheduler, Python, R client. They are quite they are quite uh, similar, and they are um, can be extracted out to shared across uh, my gene.info and my variant.info. And that's actually what we have uh, done in the past months. We take this um, this uh, code base out and made a, another new um, so-called Biosynth API SDK uh, repo. So that we uh, we first we of course like we can re we can allow us to refactor refactor our code base for my gene.info and my variant.info. So now. And my gene.info and my variant.info are all based on the same common framework that give us the easiness of the like in terms of code man, uh, maintaining and the long term um, long term um, updating uh, long term development. So um, 
also that allow us to build uh, other um, interesting biological type uh, by entity types we call it other bisons um, first one I think as a proof of concept we just built uh, uh, another new API called species API and we also got a new domain called bisons.io bison for the species we now um, we now just put a, like under a domain name called s dot .io. That will be the um, same uh, high performance API for species data, and but that species data, of course, is really small. So that you, we use it as a proof of concept, and um, and also we are currently in a, a progress. Uh, I think we almost close to release to the, uh, another new Bison's API called drugs drugs or con slash compounds API. Um, that we currently put an, a name under c.bisons.io. And as you can imagine, uh, eventually we're probably going to put a, like a something um, like a g.bisons.io that represented the gene that basically will be an alias to current uh, my gene.info. And we can also have the v.bisons.io that will be the variant and, and an alias for the my variant.info. And, and so on, we're probably going to build like other. Um, other biosynths API and uh, for example the disease you might call like d.biosynths.io we want to keep those like a single letter subdomain as our A is just to make sure um, I want to make sure the um, API is a, is a an API endpoint is a concise and B is a, want to make it like as um, as like our um, first class citizen um, endpoint in, in the collection of a Biosense APIs. Okay, so okay, so here's a, a little bit more detail about the Biosense API, and I think we with all this uh, API Biosense API we plan to build, and also um, also the like uh, any new API you might come from our collaborator. So I think all this API will share the unified web API patterns. For example, they will have an entity uh, retrieval endpoint with uh, first with the version number as a prefix, version one or version two, and then the entity name like gene, variant, species, uh, and, and the drugs or compounds, and a slash that um, particular ID for the for this um, object, and we also support like a get for the retrieval one and a post for batch retrieval for a list of the ID. And also, you will have an entity a query endpoint. So also the version and is with a uh, call like query, and you can pass a query turn using queue parameter. And the same like a get can for the one query turn and a post for the batch query turn, batch queries. And all this API will have a common API feature like a we mentioned like a version endpoint, and they will all support like a, like a JSONP at a course. Um, Protocols they are like it's very useful when you using the uh, those type of API in a web application so that it can be accessed through the AJAX call, and also they all support like a so-called message pack format that is a binary JSON format so it can make the um, into the transition uh, the transfer transfer the web service call even more efficient over the stream based uh, uh, JSON format. And also, they all can support the JSON LD, so that make the, all the data become a linked data, and we can do more things between uh, in terms of like uh, connecting the connecting different Biosynths API, even with other other um, other outside um, APIs. Okay, so that would be a good thing to have for all the Biosynths API. And then now here, I just want to give a brief uh, brief demo, uh, not demo, is like brief. Um, Showcase of how we build this uh, so-called uh, species API using the Biosense API framework. Um, here is right now we put under s.biosense.io, and you can see we can, you can make the query for any species, and v1 species 9606 that will be the human, and you can see there's an optional parameter called include children, so that will give you uh, another this attribute called children. Uh, with all the uh, all the two children nodes in terms of taxonomy tree, it's actually surprised to see actually there's a two subspecies under the human. Human is not a, not a, the just a, um, just the end of the taxonomy tree. Um, so um, 
yeah, when you when you do this, actually here, this although we call the species actually here, you can put in any any taxonomy ID. So not just at a species level, you can put it like a family level, a phylum level, any any level um, in the taxonomy tree. And, then, and once you get that, you will get all the common feature, common attributes related to this uh, taxonomy ID, like a name, a gene bank. And also, the, also there's like a lineage. That's uh, that's basically the, all the um, all the nodes in the taxonomy tree, all the way back to the back to the taxonomy ID one. And also, what's the immediate parent? And also the list of the children I mentioned. Also the all, all kinds of a name. All, all those are ranks for this taxonomy ID. Okay, then the second is a query endpoint. You can you can make any kind of a query for any field in this data object. For example, I will query like a, a rank is a phylum, and the common name is a gram uh, positive. So that will give me the this uh, taxonomy uh, entry for the gram positive uh, gram uh, gram positive bacteria. Okay, so. Okay, so and um, actually the species API now uh, is is uh, used uh, by the uh, my gene info. And previously, um, in when you query a gene, you can actually speci uh, specify the species. Right, you can limit your query, um, for example, kinase within the human. So you can provide the species equal to human or species equal to nine six zero six the taxonomy ID. Um, now with this species API, we actually can do the query beyond the species. For example, you you can do like the you can do a query for any like a for for at like a, a family level at a phylum level. Um, for example, this like uh, this query basically will try to query what's the uh, give me all the like a light a lytic enzymes for any uh, fermic fermic Famicutus, uh, that's a gram-positive uh, bacteria. So previously, when you just uh, send the one, two, three, nine, that's the taxonomy ID for gram-positive bacteria. It will return nothing because uh, there's no gene associated to this uh, taxonomy ID. It's only the specific bacteria will have the associated gene, not at this final level. And but now with the species ID. <coughs> With the species API, you can pass an optional parameter called like an included tax, uh, taxonomy tree equal to true. Then you will get back to the all the uh, it will search for the same this query term uh, for all all tax all species under this um, under this uh, phylum this uh, gram positive bacteria that basically give you all the matched lytic um, lytic uh, enzymes for any gram positive um, bacteria. So that's another nice feature we add, uh, we added to the mygene.info, and also using the uh, underlying using the um, species API. Okay, so here is just a want to show you how uh, actually using the Bison's API framework is how uh, minimum code we actually need to put uh, to in order to make this uh, species API live is really uh, simple to make. And for example, this one you'd really just uh, have uh, um, put like a 40, only uh, less than 50 lines of a code. You already have all the endpoints show up here. You have the species endpoint, you got query, query endpoint, and the metadata endpoint give you the version of the uh, data and all the available fields. And really, like here is just a subclass of uh, existing Bison's uh, query query class, and you don't need to do any. Um, customization. If you uh, then you already have the, all the same pattern of a uh, uh, same an uh, API pattern available for the species data. And of course, if we want to do some uh, customization, then you can create another file, basically a uh, subclass, so called uh, this uh, ES query class, and you are just adding some uh, species specific functionality. For example, we want to add uh, that include the children. Uh, parameter, which is a space, uh, this species API specific, and then we just uh, do a subclass and uh, creating, a, adding this feature. And still, by just adding this feature, we just it just cost us like, another 80 line of a code. And in total, 
and it was just just two files and it's, it's a pretty uh, pretty minimum code repo and built on top of the Bison's API framework then you already have the same high performance same um, same uh, unified uh, pattern a, uh, endpoint pattern for the species API already so and by doing this is actually uh, pretty exciting for us and uh, that means we can really uh, compute the um, expand our technology to build the, any other type of uh, biological entities or like biosynths. And then we started to try to make a new uh, biosynths API for drugs or slash compounds, right? So um, we are making pretty uh, good, uh, good progress and uh, we have this uh, new endpoint based on c.biosynths.io. It will be live pretty soon. And currently we took the data from uh, like a drug bank, Campbell, and the PubCam, um, and um, aggregated them together based on the entry key so that we aggregate all the attributes from these three databases by the by the entry key. The entry key is just a, if they are, uh, two drugs have the same entry key, and they means uh, they are the same chemical uh, structure for the drug. So that we can get all the information from all three uh, databases and served as the same uh, high performance API. And here is uh, just a uh, example query uh, URL endpoint, URL patterns for the uh, drug API is the same like you can get the drug uh, based on the Campbell ID, based on the, this is a, what so-called like an inchi key, is a hashed version of an inchi representation of a, of a drug or chemical compound. You can also do the uh, all kinds of the, the queries uh, on this um, on different like attributes around the drug. And as you can see, this is very similar to my gene.info or my variant.info. And you you have the same endpoint pattern, and you have the same feature like uh, like a, a get query and a post queries. So it will be a very uh, unified uh, interface for those different kind of biases. Okay. So um, this is probably just uh, like a summary slide for the Biosynths API I covered before. So really like uh, for us, this Biosynths API is going to provide these two things. One is we will, we will, we will build a, collect, a collection of the data APIs. We have the gene variant, and we already ha also uh, have the species. We will release a drug API pretty soon, and we probably will expand this to a little a few more um, entities, and that's our plan. We will provide a collection of all this data API for the research community. And also, we, um, on the other hand, this Bison's API is also a framework to for building the new APIs, even for other users, and, and even like a, either either like a, we can we, um, we can help you to build your own API uh, and your own like a dedicated host or um, if the data is not too big, I think we can pretty just uh, help you to host your data and in our server so that you don't have to deal with all this uh, uh, server backend stuff. We already have the infrastructure ready, so if you have a new data type, a new biasing type, we can we are happy to talk about the how um, we can help you to build the build the APIs. And really, I think the for um, for this, um, for this, I think previous currently we are doing the, we are doing uh, all providing all these data APIs, and I can I can call them like just like a data as a service, so you can access the data using a web service API, and also by providing a framework, we're basically extending the, our capacity to providing the so-called like software as a service. So um, as I mentioned, yeah, if you have a new type of biosynths. Would like to build an API, we'll be happy to help you uh, to um, to create this uh, APIs. Okay, so I and um, we build we really like to build this APIs because we think the API is very important, right? It's really I think nowadays in this uh, cloud computing um, um, cloud computing uh, uh, this cloud computing era, I think the Really, API technology is it, it, it is uh, it is the core of the cloud computing. It's really say like a um, cloud technology. It is like about the APIs. I pretty much we can say that. 
And I like this uh, this quote from CNET, as he said, like the, without APIs, there's just no uh, cloud computation. And we think API is important. That's why we built our uh, Biosense API. And also, no doubt, the, all the other uh, BD2K centers, they also know the importance of the APIs now. And uh, um, there will be uh, quite a few uh, APIs come out from uh, almost every every uh, BD2K centers. Um, that which is uh, very great to see, right? And we are we now we will have uh, instead of uh, like all the flat file we have to download um, from multiple places, we now uh, we can just rely on the APIs to get all this structured data from a variety of uh, data sources. So, and really like this whole Biosense API is is is, a, is just a part of the entire current growing uh, API ecosystem, and and that actually gave uh, some uh, importance of how we want to categorize all these APIs. There's some effort already going on. For example, in Europe, this uh, called like uh, Alexa, um, they actually build something called BioTools, and the, the UI is just bio.tools. And also, they collected like the 51 APIs so far, and it's a slightly older um, effort called BioCatalog, they also collected over a thousand APIs. They all just a biological specific um, API um, API uh, registries. And I also know from our BD2 and the ASPAC is uh, also what well, build the um, build, um, build the uh, API uh, like a resource registry for any biological resources. That certainly like will include the APIs. Uh, we will uh, will be excited to um, to see how the how the Aztec and resources registry um, will help to uh, categorize, help the, to, um, to 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 for the API discovery, and also last two is probably a little bit more generalized uh, API repository or registry, and the first one is called Caddy, a uh, and another is like a, a more uh, popular called like a, a programmable web. They all have like like about a fifteen. 15,000 of APIs already, but they are very uh, general general uh, APIs, not biological specific. But overall, I think you got the uh, you probably got the idea that right now the API is getting uh, is, uh, is is uh, getting more and more popular and uh, and more and more accessible and available more available for the um, for, uh, in, in the biological and the biological and the general in almost like uh, every field. Okay, so. Then we then we realize that, that there's uh, some issue with all the current existing uh, API registries, right? For example, the by catalog and also the programmable web. They basically when they document a uh, API, pretty much just uh, covers uh, so-called like a maybe very basic information like a, who provided this and what's the endpoint, maybe where's the URL, where's the documentation. And it's not a very, 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 um, very rich and rich metadata about the API. For the catalog purpose, I think that's good enough. But um, if you want to do more, for example, want to increase the uh, uh, discoverability of the API, or how to, you want to figure out how to how to pipe uh, how to uh, using this um, different API in your pipeline. And, and that actually still is a not a very um, that is not done very well using the current API um, API uh, catalog or registry uh, resources. And here's a, just an example. Uh, for example, if we can have a more rich annotations, like a, and currently for my variant for my gene dot, actually we did pretty well. We have this so-called live API um, page. People can and can 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 post can do the uh, live query using this interface, and uh, and, uh, and within this interface, you can you, we have the very um, very uh, comprehensive description and uh, about the va um, parameter name and the parameter type and parameter location. Also the also this help description and tells what kind of uh, parameter, uh, what kind of value will be accepted. Uh, by this parameter, for example, this uh, Q for my variant uh, API 
it will accept like the RSID from dbSNP. That's of course right now this is a as a free text. Ideally, if we can capture this in a more structural way, in a more semantic way, so that we can we can automatically know okay this query Q query parameter Q actually accept the uh, db dbSNP RSID as an input, and it will uh, produce the variant object. And uh, this, uh, within this variant object, we know it contains the gene uh, gene symbol or gene ID uh, associated to this variant. And then we will we will also know uh, try to find okay, what, given those uh, gene ID or gene symbol, what will be another API can give me all the details about this gene. So that um, if we do the same annotation, same documentation for the my gene.info. You can easily know, okay, my gene.info actually can give you uh, full information about this gene, given a gene ID or gene symbol. So then we can now we can now uh, start from the RSID query and for the match the gene ID, a uh, match the uh, match the variant to get the associated gene ID, and all the way to get the related gene. For example, the gene family or the functional uh, functional annotation like uh, uh, go categories or pathways associated to this gene so that we can do the uh, we can connect uh, we can do the cross api query and by connecting the my variant.info and my gene.info apis i think that's um, this we showed although we showed it using the my variant and my gene really we wanted uh, by we wanted this to happen by um, by uh, providing the rich annotation for the existing api so that we can even build more um, cross API query and build more API based uh, pipelines like this. Okay, here is a, then this is going to uh, touch on the another related project we uh, are working on uh, in the past months called a smart API project. And the objective for this project is to reduce the barrier for the discovery and the reuse of web APIs through the um, rich, uh, through the like a richer um, semantic metadata. Um, of course, in order to do this, we want to build the tools to help the API developer or other user to really annotate um, or authoring the metadata for the for the or the APIs. And and with this API, uh, with this rich annotated API, we call this API become a smart API. If you have the semantic uh, metadata, that's how the smart API name come from. And if you have uh, and we also um, actually, if we want to also develop a web application to utilize this uh, annotated semantic metadata for API to help the discover the so-called smart API and facilitate the uh, linkage between this API and users' uh, particular um, pipelines, just like I showed in the previous slides. And I also want to mention this is a one-year supplement uh, awarded uh, from the NIH as a collaboration between our uh, our Hard BTQ Center and the CEDA Center in Stanford, and I mean, like a, um, really like the Michelle and me and Andrew, we are uh, leading this project. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, uh, one as uh, one particular goal is we want to uh, creating a tool to help to authoring the metadata. And that uh, we plan, uh, we are actually going to build on top of the CEDAS technology because CEDA technology, they already have a infrastructure to help the all the like uh, metadata input and providing auto com uh, auto completion feature among the, all the uh, controlled vocabularies. All this we can just uh, take the in, take the infrastructure by uh, providing an API specific uh, template so that we can get all this um, uh, input interface. Uh, the metadata authoring interface for free, and that's a nice thing. And also, we will build a so-called API profiling module to help to describe the specific API's output. For example, we want to uh, also know, uh, also like provide information about uh, what kind of a data field per, uh, returned by this um, by your API. Well, are you providing gene ID, uh, providing a gene symbol, and a lot of this actually can be uh, guessed from uh, example queries. Automatically, um, um, okay. So um, another one. Once uh, it's like when, once we have all this 
um, get the metadata from the user, we want to output this metadata in a standard in, in a standard way. Right now, we uh, decide to using a call, so called Swagger, and now actually uh, on top of Swagger, now it's become a so called Open API initiative, providing a standard for building the API metadata. It will provide a, uh, once you have the Swagger um, API metadata, you will have this um, nice interface to describe your API. And we currently, uh, this is our M1. We pretty much have finished all the metadata with all the template. And we also uh, are currently in progress of uh, finish up all this API output profiler. Here's a, just a, a screenshot of our API profiler. For example, you provided the usage uh, uh, API example calls here. Once you submit, uh, it will basically give you a profile of all the possible uh, value types. Like we have ensemble, we will have the ensemble uh, NCBI gene, also the axon. If, of course, we are not able to um, capture any um, any uh, field types. In that case, you will have a way to either select from drop down or type their own uh, annotation or the own data type for the each, each individual attributes. Okay, so. In terms of API, uh, in terms of this uh, smart API M2, we really want to uh, are building our building a, a repository and also building a query engine for the API. And really, I don't want to uh, spend too much time here. Uh, we can leave to the next talk. And here, I think I was just uh, uh, closing up my uh, talk here, and I would like to uh, give you all the uh, knowledge to our uh, biosync team. Really, the um, we have all the uh, team from uh, Scripps and also also the another collaborating team from the University of Washington, led by uh, Sean Mooney, who is also supported by the U fifty one and our U one uh, grant. And also, this is a smart API team, uh, led by uh, Michelle at Stanford and uh, me and Andrew from the Scripps. Um, I think I will just uh, stop here and uh, take any questions if you have. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what what type of a uh, database do you use? Is it uh, MongoDB? For uh, for our like my uh, for the bio. yeah yeah for, uh, right now yeah Bison's uh, API. So we um, it, we actually for the it, it's like uh, all the data from the flat file we act, uh, we do the parsing we do the aggregation, and then basically we store as in the MongoDB. But MongoDB is just like uh, intermediate storage for us. Mm -hmm. And once everything is aggregated in MongoDB, then we send it to search for the for the indexing. And once it's indexed, everything is uh, on the Elasticsearch. We, um, actual query, user query, never hit a MongoDB. And we don't even have mm -hmm. a Mon MongoDB on our AWS, um, AWS uh, cluster. And we only have a MongoDB in, uh, in, internally that will be just for the data aggregation, data preparation. I see. And and you said you map out the the entities using JSON LD. Map the entity. Like the different like from like genes to variants or. Oh yeah, so that one, um, yeah, certainly JSON LD will give you. Uh, basically, JSON LD is a really, I, to me, I feel like JSON LD is, is is just a standard way of uh, of a pointing pointing like in your data structure. Where's, for example, where's your in your data structure? Because the JSON is a heter, her, um, is a hierarchical structure, right? right. Using JSON LD, you 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 basically using a standard URI to point to. Okay, maybe uh, my gene symbol is called like a gene dot symbol in my return structure. Maybe other people will recall like a symbol. So uh, using JSON LD, we can know where this uh, attribute is in your data structure, and then the link between the my variant and, and my gene, and can use this information to tell okay where to get the my uh, get the gene symbol, and then pass this uh, gene symbol to the uh, my gene for the next uh, API. So that yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is certainly uh, facilitated, facilitated by the JSON LD, but I, but I, uh, I think just the JSON LD is not enough. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you.